I'm going to give you the first tip. All right. Tip number one. Tip number one. Get obedient. Get obedient. Get obedient. I'm going to take you to a scripture real quick. It's in first Samuel. And I got to address this. This is this is kind of edgy. And I got to address this. So if you read in first Samuel 15, 13, I think this is a religious spirit. Some people have this blessed. I mean, I get it. Like some people really, when they say they're blessed and highly favored, they literally mean they're blessed and highly favored. They're declaring it over themselves. And I'm not talking about those people. Some people really believe they're blessed and favored because Mary was blessed and favored. But some people have a religious spirit and they hide behind this Christian jargon. Okay. Sorry, I don't even got it on the screen. They hide behind this Christian jargon. And in verse 13, it says, and Samuel came to Saul. This is a brother in disobedience, by the way. Samuel came to Saul and Saul said uh, to him, blessed be you to the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Some of us are living in a lie and that's why we can't hear God. We're not obedient to him. We don't live right. <laughs> and this brother's over here lying through his teeth. How about some blessed, blessed, and highly favored? Like, come on, bro. You know, you didn't do what the Lord called you to do. So I just want y'all to look at this. Okay. But I'm gonna jump down. You know, this is, this is kind of like a false religion. Okay. Don't get religious with God, get relational with God. There came a point in time where people thought they could just offer up a sacrifice or just go to the temple and pay for some dove or, you know, whatever it is, they would do all these weird things. And God's like, man, I want your heart. I'm not taking any pleasure in sacrifices. Jesus said, you do not, you do, there's a prophecy of Jesus. It puts it like this. It says like, you know, you do not have these delights in these um, sacrifices. Else would I give it? He says, lo, I come in the volume of the book that was written of me to do your will. So Jesus offers himself instead of sacrifices. And I'm telling you, Romans 12, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable worship. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, perfect will of God. God's calling you to a real relationship with him. So if you go down to 1 Samuel 15, right, and you go to 19, it says, why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? This is the prophet getting confrontational with Saul. Samuel, it's interesting. We just read about Samuel. Why did, so Samuel, when we first read about him, he was a little boy, but now he's a confident grown man. He don't play that. Why did you pounce on the spoil and do what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And Saul said to Samuel, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I have gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me lying through his teeth. Some of us need to get rid of that lying spirit. I have brought Agag, the king, the Malachite. I mean, from a uh, king of Amalek and have devoted the uh, Amalekites to destruction. The Lord had told him to get rid of everything, to kill everything. But this brother wanted to take the best of everything and throw a party, listening to the people. The issue with Saul in my study, let me let me just zoom in because this might be a warning for some of us. The issue with Saul was his love for the people. Not even his love for the people, like how people saw him. Remember, I believe the Bible says he was a handsome man. He wants to look cute and look fluffy and look cool. Oh, Samuel, don't leave me. So, uh, Samuel, come honor me in front of the people so I don't feel embarrassed. That was his attitude. He cared too much about what people thought. He wasn't really in it for, for, for a broken heart. He was in it because he was broken because the people would see him get called out. But let me continue on. It says, but the people took of the spoil, the sheep and the oxen, the best things devoted to destruction, to sacrifice to the Lord, your God and Gilgal. It's interesting that the people, he would allow the people to do something God told them not. God said, get rid of it all. But the people chose to do this party or this sacrifice of these animals. And God did not tell them. He said, kill them, Saul. Let every. And as some of us in our lives, like you got to get rid of everything that gets in the way of God. 
Yes, you have to fully surrender. God is a God that wants all evil, all wickedness repented of. You cannot hold anything. So if you're sleeping with someone, you need to get out of that. It's better to marry than to burn. If you're in a situation, you're hanging out with the wrong people, man. I remember, man, like I'll be with these Christians. We leave in church and we get in the car to get a ride home. I don't know these dudes and they in the car smoking weed. I'm like, bro, this ain't me. I start witnessing to the dude that was smoking the joint, but it's just like (laughs) I start prophesying to him. But it's like some people, they don't they don't know holiness through a wet through. I said a wet paper bag. They can't get holy through a wet paper bag like they (laughs) they don't. The Bible says that some people is as if they don't know their right hand from their left when they should. And some people just don't let go of the world. We all got to do it. I tell you all this, man, like. The people, the first people I had to walk away from was the same people that protected me when guns was pulled out on me and I was about to get shot and jumped. They stood up to those dudes. I could have been killed right there. But those same people, the Lord told me, stop hanging with them. I'm like, these dudes saved my life a few weeks ago. You use them, Lord. They're my friends. No, show me through a dream. Get, stop hanging out with them few weeks later they all went to jail matter of fact a little bit i believe a little bit after that that might have been before or after but i know that these dudes just started going to jail and stuff robbing people and all this different stuff so i'm just saying like you have to sacrifice it all y'all remember that song it used to say there's a voice that cries out in the silence Searching for a heart that it that will love him, something like that. Longing for a child that will give him their all, give it all. He wants it all. That's a powerful song, man. I might have to listen to that. But he wants it all. Let me finish, man. Verse twenty-two. And Samuel said, "Has the Lord as delight, uh, has as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord?" prophet you're gonna have to learn how to obey his voice behold to obey is better than sacrifice and listen than the fat of rams i'm gonna read the king james side for the for 23 let me highlight this for you in, in sky blue for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stuff do you want to be a prophet witch do you want to be a diviner do you want to be a witch keep rebelling and not listening to him Keep living in sin and and, and trying to be a prophet. We prophesied in your name, Lord. We cast out demons in your name. He said, depart from me. I never knew you. Go into outer darkness. There's weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's not me saying, it's the scripture saying that. It says, And stubbornness is as the sin of thy idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath rejected thee from being king. It's a hard pill to swallow, man. But that's tip number one. I got to speed this up. We're almost done. Tip number two, spend time with God, prophet. You want to start hearing him. So number one was get obedient. Like you have to live a holy lifestyle. Number two, spend time with God. Spend time with God. And I need you to understand this because I'm just a representative here. This isn't about me. What I'm about to say, it's not really about me. Jesus wants this. We always say, like, if God was here, what would he do? If you got a conversation with God, what do you think he would say? Like, I'm telling you right now, 100 percent, this is what God wants to say to you right now. If he was right here. John 14, 21. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. One thing I had to learn as a younger Christian was obedience. To live a lifestyle of obedience and that obedience would always propel my life. It would always bless my life. If I wanted to, if I ever felt like I wasn't being blessed, 
I will remember obedience. Get obedient, man. It'll, it'll transform your life. But the Bible's teaching you right here. It says, Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and will come to him and make our home with him. OK, so Jesus is making it very clear, like there's a contract here. There's a covenant here. It's called. Keeping my commandments, what's his commandments? Well, you can sum it up in one. The greatest commandment, love the Lord, your God. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself on these two hang all the law and the prophets. If you get love down packed, I think you're good. OK, love God, love your neighbor. But if you do these things, if you get into a lifestyle of obedience, you will hear him. You will begin to hear God. OK. Last one and I'm done. We're talking about how do I start hearing him? Last one. Believe you will hear him. Believe you can hear him. Starts there. Remember, I told you, you have rights as a child of God. And when you take on those rights, he manifests himself to you. You begin to have the, the sonship. You begin to get obedient. Then he manifests himself to you. OK, so it's lifestyle, man. You got to live right. He will initiate that relationship. He will appear to you. Jesus said, I will manifest myself to you. OK, I understand like I can hear God through the scripture when I read the scripture, like it almost was like God's talking to me directly through the Bible most of the time. OK, but there's another side of the Holy Spirit where he comes in your dream. He comes in a vision. He starts speaking to you. God is getting to the point now in my dreams. He's speaking to me audibly. Telling me to pray. <laughs> like most of the time, I just pray out of obedience. I don't wait for a voice to tell me to pray. But last week, Lord told me to pray. <laughs> like we got to get to a place to where we're obedient to the point in abiding with him, spending time with him that he begins to speak to us. OK, believe that you will hear him, prophet. Faith, faith, faith. You have to have faith. Let me read this real quick. Uh, Hebrews 11, 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm on the King James side, okay? ESV says in verse 6 here, And without faith it is impossible to please him. For, any, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. King James, for without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. I'm telling y'all, man, from 20. I always get the years mixed up, but 2011 to like 2013. I couldn't really operate in any of the gifts. I couldn't hear him prophetically. I couldn't hear his voice. It was just not something that I experienced, but I begin to get obedient. I begin to try to live right. I begin to try to 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 do the things that God wanted me to do. Thank you so much, Diana. I always appreciate it. And I, I appreciate you so much for that blessing there. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. But I had to get to a place when I was younger um, where I just I just begin to believe him. I begin to I would just pick these scriptures up and quote them. Look, I understand there's a version of Christianity that's very philosophical and sedity and cute. But I had a desperate Christianity. And at this point in my life, I got a desperate Christianity. Now, God's doing some things in my life. He's shaking things up. I don't know what he's about to do in the next few years. And I'm at the place now. I'm just going to have to just get desperate for the Lord. I don't know what he's doing in my life, but I'm going to trust him. And I'm going to believe the best. But one of the things I had to do was quote the scripture and remind myself Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not. Anyone who comes to him must believe that he is. What do you mean he is? It's what he declared to Moses, right? I am that I am. I'm real. I exist. Moses was one evidence to give to the people that God was actually talking to him. So God tell them that I am that I am sent you. 
So the first thing you need to do as you go through your wilderness journey from Egypt to the promised land, you got to know that he is. Let me highlight it again. OK. I'm going go to King James side. OK. If that's all right. King James says. For he that cometh to him must believe that he is. And not only that. That he is a rewarder. Can anybody testify that God actually answers prayer? I remember when I didn't have a job and I, I had to get on my, I had to cry and get on my knees desperate to the Lord because I, I was working a contract job. And I'm like, God, I need benefits. I got a family coming. I need to get a house. And I began to cry out to him and ask him and he answered me and he gave me a great, and I'm still working that job eight years later, providing for my family. And I've been blessed to be able to get things that I never thought I could have as a kid. I used to wonder, like, how do people afford car payments? I'm from the hood. Like, this don't make sense. Most people I know make like seven, eight dollars an hour. How do people afford a car? It's like four hundred a month. And I'm making like I think at the time I was making one hundred dollars a week. I was working part time at something, though. But it was just like I never understood these things. But the rabba baba. But the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow to it. Let me give you some more scripture in your arsenal. Because I believe that's what a lot of y'all need. You don't need to hear me. You need to hear him. Psalm 37, 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Don't just trust him. Do what he says. Dwell in the land and befriend, uh, and befriend faithfulness. Matter of fact, I'm just going to read the King James because that's what I grew up on. That's why I begin to remember. I feel fire on my hands. I begin to remember scripture. Because I was broke and I was poor and I was powerless. I didn't have the anointing. I couldn't hear God. And I would wonder like, man, when is God going to listen to me? When is he going to bless me? When am I going to start experiencing him? The Bible says, I'm going to read the King James for you like my mother and the Lord used to give it to me. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. I feel fire coming out of my mouth, man. I feel the anointing. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. He shall bring it to pass. This is God talking to you. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as light and thy judgment as noonday. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who uh, prospereth in his way, because of the one, uh, the man who bringeth uh, evil, uh, wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger. Don't get mad at the Lord when you're waiting on him to hear him. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. I'm just going to read a little more of this, y'all. I'm going to read all the way to 11. Hopefully this is blessing your spirit. This is this is God's word here. For evildoers shall be cut off. Evil this is why I always tell y'all like the wicked don't last long. Those that do the cheat code and and do quick things and and like the Bible says, don't fall into quick uh, quick uh, get rich quick schemes. That money's fast money. It's just going to go away. It says but those that wait upon the Lord they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while. And the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt dil diligently consider his place and it shall not be. It's just like Joseph. The Bible says that Joseph got to a place after he birthed his two sons that the Lord caused me to forget all the toil in my father's house. And then I believe one of his other sons was fruitfulness. I believe the me meaning of the name was. So you'll, you'll come into a place of fruitfulness and you'll forget all the toil and stress from your father's house. It says, but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Look, I just want you to at this point, I want you to start picking up the scripture and believe in scripture. There's only so much I can do. I can teach and teach and teach on this stuff, but you got a dad that loves you and he has many gifts for you. OK, so those three tips were get obedient Spend time with God and believe you'll hear him. 